pescarii trez din pescuit. Este normal. Singura problemă pe care ar trebui să înțeleagă toată lumea, că la un moment dat, dacă o să fie un pescuit sau braconaj intensiv, nu o să mai aibă ce să pescuiască în viitor. Acest aspect de unii pescari este înțeles, dar alții e mai greu pentru că dacă depinde existența de familie, atunci totuși se schimbă raportul de interes. Noi ce am vrut să promovăm și cred că vom reuși să promovăm împreună cu statul român, pe lângă alte acțiuni care sunt lansate pentru a veni cu o compensare în această direcție, noi vom implica foarte mulți pescari de pe Dunărea de Jos în activitatea de pescuit științific. Această activitate este controlată va fi monitorizat mult mai intens decât până în prezent. Ca să începem ușor, ușor să curățăm problema aceasta, ce vom face noi nu este orientat contra pescuitului. Nu este orientat contra populației de pescat. Este orientat de a stopa declinul ca să putem să ridicăm prohibiția în viitor. Dar ca să poți să ajunge acolo, trebuie să iei măsuri drastice acum. Their journey is ancient, so ancient that it has been encoded in their DNA. They come to the Danube from the Black Sea because it is the only way they can reproduce. It is both the journey and the quest. Over time, the best breeding habitat have disappeared due to natural or anthropogenic causes. Few remain, and finding them requires energy. Their struggle for survival is extraordinary and has unforeseen depths. The obstacles encountered on the way to the breeding habitat are of all kinds, and in the last hundred years, most of them are anthropogenic. From the gigantic dam at the Iron Gates to the fishermen's nets, everything seems to be against them. Yet, there are some specimens that reach the old breeding habitats. Here, the dance begins. The harmonious movements of the two specimens of sturgeon, male and female breeders, are as ancient as the memory of the journey up to the Danube. And for each specimen that reaches maturity, after eight to ten years from birth, arriving here is a journey through time. Both into the past, because the memory is old, but also into the future, because the young offspring carry the species forward. River transport, fishing, agriculture, energy production, and hydrotechnical constructions are all human needs. The need for comfort and sometimes greed are the main destructive causes of habitats. In essence, in the last hundred years, the primary cause of the disappearance of sturgeons is the disappearance of habitats. And the disappearance of habitats is clearly a result of human influence. After much research and years of monitoring, we are barely starting to understand how we can avoid such disasters in the future. According to research, nowadays new priorities are established for the human communities in the Lower Danube area. People need to activate their capacity for adaptation so that sturgeons can be conserved in their environment. The people of Danube communities can and must design their future in such a way that the impact of daily life on the breeding environment of wild sturgeons is minimal. This is the only option for us to still see wild sturgeons on the Danube for the several hundred years to come.
process of wild sturgeon reproduction, one scene can be understood. Even though we've known about it for a short time, curiosity pushes for even more knowledge. We already know that we can succeed in conserving them. The only problem is that we need to succeed quickly, or else we will lose the race against their extinction. For now, sturgeons somehow convinced us to pay attention to them and their habitat needs. If we want to be at least as intelligent, we must go the rest of the way to ensure that they have what they need for at least several hundred years from now. The effort is immense and needs to be a collective one involving all communities along Lower Danube as well as the rest of Europe, where wild sturgeons still exist.